Alright ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Princes of Azamar Season 5 Episode 13 The Lost Talisman. I had to think because I forgot. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. I had to think because I didn't know. I was like, maybe I'll find it out. It's not episode yeah. 13, it's episode 17. I numbered it wrong. <laughs> I'm gonna go back and edit that. Oh, we're later. time traveling. Start over the intro. <laughs> this Could didn't be. happen. Rewind. Uh, yeah, episode 13 was our 100th episode, Secrets of the Shifting Sands. I think I mixed up the numbers from Into the Black when I posted it. <laughs> Are you just in base 14? There we go. That's, yep, that's exactly. There you go. Uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Let's start with a round of intros in the top left, played by Lily and Alex. They are the twin blacksmith fighters. They're the Eldritch Brothers. You've probably heard of them. Woo! Oh, look at those muscles. In oh, yeah, the top right, played by our friend and Brandon. You can't hit him. He's too smart. It's Baronum Shortwick. Hey. Now you. <laughs> In the bottom left, our friend Nicole playing the Paladin, formerly of Mother Knight, formerly of the Morning Lord, and now of Ill Mater, Ill with an Mater. evil twin. It's Irina, or rather an evil clone, I guess, not a twin, technically. Yeah, I have an evil twin. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least, our guest star Zach, who will be playing Pharaoh. <laughs> That's how we have to refer to him every time, right? Pharaoh. Yeah. <laughs> With one eye on, I guess grain is what he thinks it's called. Yes. And his other <laughs> eye on these crazy people who kidnapped him. Hey, we did not kidnap him. Liberated. We liberated him. Does he have shackles anymore? No. You're welcome. We really sound like imperialists, and we need to work on this. <laughs> yeah. We did come to a new land and say we were going to bring democracy. We actually did. This is really upsetting now. Wow. So, what a difference a week makes in changing perspective. All right. So last time on Princes of Azamar, um, y'all have been here in the Nine Deserts looking for a magical amulet that Zavarin says he will use to protect the city of Azai, and in exchange for you bringing him this amulet, he will lend to you the strength of his mages, which you need to go win the war in the west against the orcs. Um, and Ruspal. And yes, Ruspal, who leads the orcs. Uh, you all have gone on sort of this wild goose chase where Achman Ra showed up at the ruins that you arrived in, found this magic uh, brazier that filled with water that when uh, gold is put into it, uh, of a certain value, uh, the ruins started becoming this temple and now uh, has been growing larger and larger. He sent you off on a wild goose chase to find this amulet in the Eternal Palace. Uh, you had a vision from Pharaoh who you did not expect to find here in the desert, uh, but this Pharaoh has no memories uh, of being Pharaoh. He has no recognition of y'all. Um, but you discovered that Achman Ra has this amulet that you've been looking for, that he, he led you. It was a red herring sending you the Eternal Palace. Um, so you have teleported back to Al-Zali to confront him, but instead of a uh, small temple, which is what you saw last, there is now a large city. Uh, the point of scale that I think is the common point of reference that I think everyone will understand universally is that it's roughly the size of Monte Regione. Uh, you arrived. Uh, Nadam tried to go in the gates. There was this big old line of people lined up there sort of carrying treasures that they were hoping to, to give in exchange for entry to the city. Um, Nadam went up and was like, hey, I'd like to see, uh, you know, the boss, Achman Ra guy. And the guards were like, ha, no, get in line. He then ran over the wall, was attacked by these large defense golems in the shapes of, like, Anubis faces and crocodile faces. Um, 
who just proceeded to beat the crap out of Nadam. Koros, meanwhile, was arrested because he was by Nadam when he ran over the thing and taken to the city captain, uh, which is why you see neither of them here tonight. They're off the show. I mean, it's just yeah, this. Gone. They're just gone. Meanwhile, Aridin has climbed up with a grappling hook the wall, the side of the walls of the city. Uh, Bernum is halfway up those that grappling hook, himself being covered in heavy stone from a spell that he cast. Um, been epically Sparta kicking people off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, rewinding just a little bit, when y'all teleported, oh, no, hold on, let me finish. Uh, Pharaoh ran away, because, like, y'all are crazy, and he doesn't want any part of this. Theo, as crows, materialized next to Pharaoh, scared the crap out of him, he tumbled down the dune. You guys talked a bit. Pharaoh's calmed down a little bit and is enjoying this cracker of which you called grain uh, that he's greatly enjoying. Um, that's all what's going on. But before we jump there, we're going to go back a little. When y'all teleported to Al Zali, uh, Irina somehow was pulled out of that teleportation spell. Um, and I'm going to use this moment to test a feature that I recently fixed and I hope works. Everybody oh, can't hear me. Yeah. Ha ha ha! <laughs> I mean, Alex can hear me because she's next to me, but. <laughs> All right. Irina. Uh, yes. You, you guys were saving Pharaoh. You jump off the back of this giant beetle. Um, you know, Barnum, uh, you can run upstairs if you want. <laughs> if you don't want to hear. Uh, Barnum, you know, everyone links hands, starts this teleport. Whoosh! You're floating through, through the ether for a moment, but then you feel... Um, uh, a set of hands on your shoulder, and they whoo, rip you back, and your hands, whoo, you lose your grip um, and are pulled out of the circle, um, and you find yourself whoo, floating through the ether far, far away, not going to the same destination as your friends, going further and further away. Right. You're going to go upstairs? <laughs> All, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, now Lily's coming down here to listen, too. Secret secrets. <laughs> All right. All right, so you, you pull back and you find yourself standing um, in a dark room. Uh, those hands are still on your shoulders um, and they push you forcefully down into a chair. Um, Try to look back and see who it is. Um, uh, you, you turn back uh, and you see at first... Uh, your, your brain has one response to this face, and it's Strahd. But then you realize you're uh, not looking at Strahd. It's not a vampire. He's not wearing the clothes of a count. He is draped in a blue robe of the arcane mages. You realize that this is uh, Viserin de Vere. He shares, these, he shares the similarity to Strahd, but he is not. Uh, and as the, okay. the panic sits into you, you realize that you can't move. Okay. Can't talk, can't do anything? Uh, you can talk, you just can't. Your arms and legs are limp. Okay. You're in uh, this chair. What, what do you want with me? Um, he ignores you, and he turns to someone behind him, uh, and he says, uh, Do you have it ready? And you hear a very, very familiar voice Ooh. say <laughs> yes. Uh, and walking around the chair and to in front of you, you, it's like looking into a mirror, you see yourself. But with a slash across your eye, it is the other Irina. And she takes this potion uh, and she uncorks it and she tips half of it back for you to drink. Uh, I some can't of do it, anything so sure. <laughs> some of it you're able to like spit out a little, but like definitely some of it's going down. And then she takes the rest of it, and she drinks it. Okay. And you see suddenly that scar, the 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 image in her eye fades away. Um. <laughs> uh, and you 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 even see uh, your your vision start to alter, and you can sort of see there's like a shadow in your vision. Uh. Uh, where hers is. Uh, and uh, there was something else. Oh, uh, Viserin says to you, do you have the ring? 
or rather to you, to evil you. To, to me, evil me. <laughs> evil you. Uh, and you do. It is a... Uh, I'm sort of transitioning here because you are now both of you. Um, it is essentially a like a ring of mind shielding. What it will do uh, is make the things you say ring either true or false as you desire. Great. Um, the, the potion is essentially a glamour uh, that is imperceptible even to true sight because you have changed your form. Of course. Uh, and you have everything squared away here. Ooh, I'm so excited. <laughs> I mean, no, I'm very depressed and upset that I am now evil. But, right. You know. uh, <laughs> and he says, are you ready to go back? Yes. Yes, right. I think I'm ready. And uh, he starts casting a spell and takes your hand. Whoosh, and whoosh. You whoosh back over to the Nine Deserts, you being evil you, not good you. Of course. <laughs> All right. We can bring everyone back now. Uh, and everyone's back. Some people. Ooh. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> Where'd the Hildress brothers go? <laughs> they just, they're gone. <laughs> they, they, they rolled nat 20s on Sneak. Nice. All right. Um, they stealth out of the campaign. Irina, um, why don't you give me an initiative roll so I can put you into this initiative? Sounds like a plan. Um, sorry, one sec. I forgot to pull up roll 20. I don't have any decks. <laughs> it's okay. The Eldritch Brothers are still coming back. <laughs> Loading. If someone has a D20 and wants to roll it, they can do that, too. That's all right. I don't mind. I really needed ice cream. It's important. I understand. Yeah, Thank that's you. fair. <laughs> all right. Yeah, it's taking a hot second, so if someone wants to just roll a D20. Brandon, will you do that? Cool. Sure. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, bro. Mm -hmm. D20. You got a two. Okay. Brandon, can you, you roll, roll better? Nice. It's what you get. <laughs> Two plus what? Uh, Nothing. Your dex like, is ten. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I was like, it's none. <laughs> All right. Cool. So, you all are where I previously described on the wall over by the dune. Um, when some of you notice, uh, in the place where you all had arrived in your teleportation, um, just arriving just a little bit later than all of you, uh, Irina. She fell out of that teleportation scroll, but has now just arrived late. <laughs> she just tumbled forth. She tumbles yeah. forth. Um, convenient GM plot device. <laughs> <laughs> For when a player misses a session. That's not All what right. I was thinking. No. <laughs> um, Time vortex is very dangerous. All right. Aridin. Yo. You are on top of the wall. Um, and you see in the distance... Uh, from the wall, you're fighting these guys off, but you can see Nadam, you know, he's running, and then you see these golems leap after him, right? And then he gets right up to the door, and the golems smash him down, um, and he is out. He got Ooh. effed up real hard. Uh, and then well, you I see, fight those things. of the five golems, three of them are still <laughs> hovering over him, but two of them turn, lock their eyes on you, and start leaping and bounding over the buildings towards you. Dude, GTFO! Phantom, Phantom, you might want to turn around. Well... Oh, <laughs> um, Baronum and Aridin, it is both of your turns. Okay, um, both of our turns. Aridin, you yeah. can go first if you want. That's fine. Um, are you okay with me sliding past you on the rope? Feel free. <laughs> Let's see how this works. Brandon, I love what you typed. Okay, so first I'm going to evasive footwork. So I'm going to roll a superiority die until I stop moving. I add that to my AC. Cool. I'm going to hop on the rope and start going down. You're about halfway down, down when you're about, you're about to crash into Barnum. <laughs> Roughly 30, uh, 35 feet. 35 feet. <laughs> what, is, what is crashing into Barnum going to look like? <laughs> Can I not Wait, like, how, climb down him? He's no, how far walk. are you from the ground? Just jump off, man. I'm imagining like a strung up potato and then a grape. <laughs> <laughs> grape. <laughs> I mean, you could, you could, you're could you sliding down the rope. Mm-hmm. So you're gonna hit him unless you stop hard. 
Since we have our turns at the same time, could I do my thing? Yeah, that's that's why Aaron okay. asked. <laughs> I'm going to, using the investiture of stone, I'm going to like uh, kind of kick out and swing into the wall since I can pass through stone surfaces. It is made of stone, right? <laughs> it is made of stone. So I why? There's and no I pass, in there. And I pass straight through the wall. I don't All know right. what's on the other end. You get ready, you're like, whoop, and you go, whoop, like head first. Uh-huh. Fud. Oh, no. Dong, just like when Koros tried to dimension door through it. Oh, town <laughs> city. <laughs> what did we decide was appropriate damage for smashing into a wall last time? I don't know, a lot. Well, how far did he kick back? We can find the acceleration. <laughs> that was damage. Um, Not more than five feet. I mean, it depends how far down the rope he was, too. He's yeah. 35 feet yeah. down the rope. I guess I would have gone feet first anyway. So if we find the angle like of the rope against bad. the wall. You probably went feet first, so your feet just slam in, your knees buckle a little when you hit. We won't give you any damage, it's alright. Okay. Something, Something about these city walls seems magical. Mm. You want to try going downward instead of wallward? Uh, yeah, I, I suppose now I will. I, do I have an option? Are you following on me? <laughs> I, I'm going to wait for you. Okay, yeah, I'll go down. All right, you guys both go down. You see that those uh, guards around you are still like struggling to get back up because they're dazed because you pummeled them down once or twice. Okay, um, so my, my maneuver is not an action. Right. Um, for my action, I would like to cast... Sanctuary on Baranon. Sanctuary! Sanctuary. It's the name of the angel theme song, just by the way, everybody. Uh, so what happens? Any creature who attacks him must make a wisdom saving throw. Or choose a new target, and if they don't do that, then they have shitty things. They can't. It's, it's bad. They can't Got do it. it. I'm doing it because my AC is insane right now. Cool. All right. So you guys get down to the bottom. I want you to get hit, little friend. You're at the bottom. You can shake your grappling hook loose. It's magic. Like the elvish it's rope. One of my knots not going to come free in a hurry. <laughs> All right. Theo, uh, you are at the bottom of a sand dune, uh, uh, just uh, well, further away from the city walls. You can still see the line of people off to your side. It, it snakes over this sand dune and down and over the next sand dune. Um, you're standing next to Pharaoh, uh, who has finished his snacking cracker. Do you have any more how? of this? I can get more of it. Uh, Jake, how far are we from the nearest group of people? Like the if line? He... Um, if you just walked over to the line, yeah, like 30 feet, like not too far. Oh, so they're close. Yeah, they're close. Okay. Um, I just say... Um, I don't want to hurt you. I just want to help. All I know is that you were a prisoner there, strapped to that wheel. No one should be forced to live like that. It doesn't mean you have to stay with us or fight with us or die with us. I just, I don't want you stuck there. Well, unstuck is better than stuck, I suppose. And besides, now that you're unstuck, you can find all these great things in the world. Like grain. Grain. Sure. <laughs> if you show me more grain. <laughs> I can show you the bread. <laughs> I can do that. All right. Theo and Pharaoh, would y'all like to do anything else with your turn? Um, Pharaoh, well, the person who you used to be, who I, it seems like you can't remember, which is not your fault, uh, used to sometimes be able to help me when I was injured. I'm going to hold up my not pinky mm -hmm. and just be like any chance it could uh, maybe fix this so well. oh, I don't know would you like to try mm -hmm. uh, sure let me see if I can give it a shot you think healing thoughts reach out into the whatever you're not really sure uh, and you try to do something uh, why don't you roll me a d3? It's ominous. <laughs> I'm not seeing all the, uh... I'm hearing bleep oh. blooping. Oh, okay. That might be me. No, it's okay. <laughs> a d3. Hmm. 
Me or me or Zach? Zach. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it should be slash R space yeah. D three. Oh, uh, I I guess I did it just to you. Oh, because if you put a G in front of it, it's a yeah, it's a, it's a GM roll. A two. Okay, cool. You sense, you you like reach out and suddenly you feel this 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 like sixth sense, and some things seem to be like shimmering almost. Like you can say that the 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 cloak that Theo was wearing, it's this black cloak uh, with it's this black feather cloak with gold tips, and has these claws on his shoulders, which are where it's holding on. That thing seems to be sparkling and glowing. You see, um, hanging off like the side of Theo's belt, there's just a little like a, it looks like a little model of a tower, just like hanging on a little hook on Theo's belt, and that is sparkling. Uh, you see Theo's sword is sparkling. Oh, suddenly, all of these things, you, you sort of sense something about them, uh, but you're not sure uh, what any of it means. Hmm. <laughs> and I don't sense any more crackers. That's a shame. <laughs> not sparkly crackers, anyway. All right. The guards around uh, Aridin and Burnham, uh, they're going to get up and bring in some attacks 28 big hit <laughs> uh, I'll say that then he'll roll like 40 it's yeah. a thing she can do temporarily as long as she doesn't as stop as long as I'm moving I can, I can dodge dope that's so cool <laughs> yeah they can't hit you unless they roll nat 20s so <laughs> let's just roll bring it Jake don't roll a bunch of nat 20s like a jerk no nat 20s alright what about Baron? Baron, what's your AC right now? It's, uh, it's 19. 19? Did they wisdom? Oh, here, let me roll some wisdom. wisdom. No, they can't hit him, so they all hit you instead. <laughs> uh, and they're just... They're, actually, they're not even hitting you, right? You're just duck, duck, dive, dip, dodge, duck, and... Dodge. dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. Those ones. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, you see those massive Anubis golems sort of leap up um, to the tops of the walls where they were statues before, um, but they don't go any further. They stop at the city walls. Ha, that's right! <laughs> Alright, and Irina, you find yourself standing um, maybe a, a, a 60, 100 feet away from the walls of this city. You you just saw Aridin and Baranum slide down this rope. Uh, you, you're you not sure where Theo uh, or Pharaoh are, or, or Koros, no, no, no. or Nadal. No, no, no. Not Pharaoh. Pharaoh? Pharaoh? <laughs> well, um, I think that taking stock of my surroundings and only seeing them, I will just go ahead and do some double dashing over there. You yeah. see that they're all they're, they seem like they're getting ready to run more towards you actually away from the Oh my bad okay okay. Um I think I'm just going to uh go ahead and cast a uh, shield of faith on myself. Cool. And be like, "Guys, what the hell? What's going on?" It's fair. That's all right. <laughs> Bear them. Fair reaction. Um, I don't even know what to do right now. I, I'm. I think I'm just going to. How many? How many of the dudes are around us right now? Uh, like five or six. Oh, perfect. Actually, that's a lot less than I thought there were. Um, I think there were more last time, and I forgot how many there were last time. So, that's how many there are now. All right. Um, I'm going to. Just so you know, if you attack them, you lose your thing. Just so you're aware, right. if you read the spell. <laughs> Uh, I don't need to attack them. That's fine. I'm going to try to make us look scary. I'm going to um, cast Seeming and target all of us and make us all look like we're these super, super mega buff, like genie kind of dudes with a uh, with little smoky legs and 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 these like just balloony, unrealistic muscles, and be all like 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 back off. We're coming into the sea. All right. What do they gotta? Right. What kind of roll do they gotta make? Um. I don't, I, don't, I don't actually know how this spell works that well. <laughs> do, 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 do. Charisma saving throw. Oh no, that's that's to them. Unwilling target. That's unwilling They're targets. willing targets. Cool. Yeah. Wait, who are these willing targets? Yeah, I'm I'm making us all seem scary. A creature uses to action to like, inspect. Okay, uh, I would like. Theo's like unwilling. Why don't you, Baron? Since you're the thing, oh, we're scary. Go away. Uh, give me an intimidation check. 
All right, cool. All right. I mean, shouldn't he have advantage if he looks bigger and scarier? Yes. Hardly need it. <laughs> but there we go. <laughs> Versus their insight. If they can tell whether this is real or not. Natural one. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> they are terrified and start to, like, fall back and stutter away. And it's just, this, this is on you, Aridin, and Arena, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, these are all, everybody that's here. Mm -hmm. you're, not, you're up there, so. I'm not here. I'm with Barrow still. I'm trying to okay. convince him uh, to come back and hang out with us. Irina is out of range, so it's just you two. Oh. Cool. We only need two Jenny to make them scared. And then are you going to... Does evasive footwork if, work if I don't have feet? <laughs> <laughs> you just seem like you don't have feet. <laughs> uh, and then, Baronum, that's your action. Do you want to use your movement? Um, I... I, I'm just going to follow other people. I'm going to stay as right. close to them as possible. You're going to follow Aridin. Cool. Aridin. Yeah. I'm just going to keep running. Cool. Uh, you, guys you guys pull your grappling hook down, and then you could just start booking it over the dune, sort of towards the way Theo and Pharaoh went. Well, wait. Baronum said, get out of the way. We're coming into the city. But then you just didn't do that. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. I was making sure that I understood what was happening and the, the plan was. Those golems are scary, dude. They deck Nadam. And Nadam yeah, can't get hit. Deck I can get hit. All right, I'm going to take us out of initiative order. A few arrows come your way from the ones who were not right next to you and were scared. Um, but otherwise, you all are able to make it sort of over the dune and to where Theo and Pharaoh are, all of you. Yeah, and I can comms kind of to them to let them know. Sending stone, whatever. Yeah. To give them more direct location information. So you guys go. You know, like 100 feet away, up to the edge of this dune, right over the next side of it, down into a little dune valley uh, where Theo and Pharaoh are. Uh, is Irina waiting. back? Irina is with Aridin and Bernum. Correct. I'll be like, Irina, I'm so glad you're back. And I go and hug you. And then, like, right after we're done hugging, I'm going to be like, can you fix my finger? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not sure how to grow back limbs, but let's give uh, something a shot. <laughs> how about digits? It's like a really you know small I mean. limb. <laughs> um, let's just try some lay on hands. I'll try to focus it on your finger. Okay. Like, like, <laughs> lay on hold. hands. Hold. <laughs> 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 Theo's like using there. all his energy to not have a full on panic attack. You take Theo's hand in both your hands. How many points? Um, you know, I'll don't, dump don't, a don't give me that many. I don't need that many. Like 30. 30 points. Uh, don't, don't give me 30. Theo, you heal 30 points. And Can I go still past my back? Finger. No finger? Still no finger. Damn it. Dang it. If she heals me 30, do I go past my max? No. No. Can you stop that? You go up to your max and stop. Alright. Um, I don't know if it went to temporary HP. Um, uh, Theo, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Um, I'm sure there's... Maybe something I can do, but I might need to meditate on it before um, I can try anything else. Yeah, and uh, this this is definitely not a place to meditate. I agree. Uh, let's get let's get Arena somewhere she can meditate. Let's uh, let's lay a group, okay? <laughs> let's get Theo's oh, finger back. Oh, I'm like, clap so Theo, you'll aggravate the wound. Hey, buddy, what do you need your finger for anyway? Drinking tea, fancily. For swinging my hammer, <laughs> perfectly, and for stirring stew, perfectly. You need five components for perfect. These uh, are the five. Uh, to be fair, it's your left hand, right? And you eat stew with your right hand. I think said it was my right hand last time. Oh, did he? I think so. It just seems like a non-essential digit. Tell that to anybody who makes bread. All the people I know who make grains, they have five digits. Oh. I'm you see why it's so important now? <laughs> Theo's panicking. Um, do, but yeah, what is what do people want to do? Do we want to like get away from the city and regroup? I feel like we should just find a better way into the city. I agree, but I think that the best way is going to be a chill way, potentially a sneaky way, potentially a at nighttime way. Um, yeah. I don't know. What do people think? Yeah. All right. Also, let's, let's, if you're applying uh, a rest, I'm fine with that. <laughs> I I think it 
it, it will probably turn into a rest, but it's okay if it, like, I'm not doing it because we need to rest necessarily. I'm doing it because we need to, um, we need to regroup, but I want Irina to meditate in character. So, um, and I actually do think we'll have a better chance if we try to sneak in at night rather than. Irina was saying something. Yeah. Oh, well, Irina was just going to ask where Quaris and Nadalmar. Oh, well, Nanam got laid out. Last we saw, he was unconscious by uh, five golems, I think it was. They were terrifying. Uh, Koros got arrested for, I don't know, standing there being a notish. <laughs> uh, can I try to use my sending stone and see if I can reach Koros? Yes, you can. Any response? No, no response. Well, his sending stone's not working, but that could be for a lot of different reasons. It's happened before. And I think he still has class feature with him, so... Class features his bird. <laughs> um, he has so. a invisible bird, uh, which spoiler alert is not a bird. Um, <laughs> which it's is Superman. His, his familiar, uh, and he calls it class feature. Yep. Cool. Mm. All right. Awesome. So, uh, the plan is a short rest? I think so. Is, is there... I want to move kind of far away. I don't want to, like, rest inside of the thing. If we walk far enough away, I can pop. Um, what you guys can do... You think that the, the fortress... Dare Stand's instant fortress might be a little tall and be seen from a distance. Um, but if you guys go over the next dune or two, the line's really, really long, and it curves off that way. Um, but you can get to the end of the line and start waiting in line, and that can count as a short rest. It's not yeah, a bad idea, right. actually. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we could do that. But I'm, I'm, I'm worried. Now that they have Nadam and Koros, they could tell whoever their captors are about what we look like. And technically, well, yeah, we should disguise met. ourselves. I think we should disguise ourselves. All I don't right. think any of us are that good at that. So go ahead and use some hit dice if you need uh, and regain any of your short rest abilities. All right. Uh, let's talk about these disguises. All right. Um... So, Theo, you were never really seen by any guards. You were just crows. So well, you no. Think... We've, I mean, we've met Achman Ra. True. Now that he has two of our members, he may have better descriptions of us, hence the disguising. Fair enough. Uh, the one of you that Achman Ra certainly has not seen is Pharaoh. Yeah. That's Sorry, true. Is Pharaoh? Thank you. <laughs> uh, so Pharaoh can not have a disguise. That makes sense. Who is Achman Ra? Achman Ra, a trickster, a man of many faces, but we've only seen one face. The face of a liar. We are looking for this great talisman, uh, which we believe can help us save the city, and he sent us with a clue to go find it. But really, he had it all along. Um, and is only using it for himself. And we want to use it to help everyone. So, he's pretty bad. Though, he did do something to make this whole city appear again, and it was all completely covered in sand, so I guess... But I guess anyone could have done it. He just put a bunch of gold in a fountain, and if anybody had known to do that, then somebody else could have done it. I guess he's not that special. A very lot of gold, though. But it was a lot of gold, yeah. I did think of it, though. All right. Uh, after 30 minutes to an hour of waiting in line, you've made it like... Wait, did you want to hear about our disguises or no? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Um, I want to take my cloak off. That's a good idea. Um, and then, I don't know, just like turn some shit I own inside out. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't really want to shave my beard. I really like my beard. Um, I'll shave the beard. And if you shave your beard, you'll just look like Aaron. <laughs> yeah, no one could ever be uglier, so I'm definitely not shaving my beard. Um, so I'm going to take a piece of cloth and just go like this, you know, because I'm in a desert. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Aridin? Yeah. Well, obviously, they would recognize its handsome face, so I need to disguise it and make it ugly. So I'm going to try and apply a fake beard using, like, I don't know, do I have, like, some, like, charcoal residue or like some ink or something that I can like rub into my face sure 
You have a mask making uh, kit which has like under my eye too. I'll go like the eyeliner route. All right, cool. Bare number. And then I'll, I'll part my hair slightly to the left. Is this the attempt at a disguise is harder for me when I have a distinct body shape. Yes. Um, I'm just gonna maintain the Ginny look. Okay, cool. See how we could do with that. <laughs> All right. So you've wait, got wait, how your... long can I concentrate on that? Uh... It's duration eight hours. It is not concentration. Cool. Yes. But uh, you dropped that on Aridin. <laughs> yeah, that's partially fine. dropped the spell. Uh... Yeah, I want my legs back. This is weird. <laughs> Are you sure? All right, fine. You don't. I look very good. Your feet good. on the ground. Irina, <laughs> uh, the guards have certainly not seen you, uh, but you know Achman Ra has. So, would you like to disguise? Yeah, I mean, I'll take off my helm and put in my bag because that's fancy and distinctive, and try to um, rub some dirt in my face and, like, I don't know, put my hair up, like maybe under a, a like scarf or something like that. Oh, oh, oh. Cool. You, you think even just like taking the helmet off will go a pretty long way because your helmet is super distinctive and he's you've always been wearing it when he's seen you. Perfect. Yeah. Great. Um, and Pharaoh, you don't need to do any disguising because he's never seen you before in his life. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, in the like hour that you short rested, you've gone barely anywhere in this line. This line is pretty slow moving. Can I ask the people in front of us how long they've been here waiting in line? Uh, they say we got here first thing in the morning as soon as they started letting us line up. Well, I guess that's today, people right? further up would say that. We got here as soon as we could today. Yeah, it's it's only mid morning right now. I guess we'll just keep waiting and then uh, we can try to talk to Pharaoh while we're in line and figure out. Is there like a what fast happened. pass line? A what? Like a fast pass line? <laughs> like, can we pay extra to get like the the Magic Mountain flash passes? I think that that's what Nadam tried to do when he got laid out flat. <laughs> oh, that's just cutting. I mean, maybe if you bring the guards something flashy enough, they'll let you. Ooh. I don't think we have anything flashy enough that I'm willing to give up. We have gold. Uh, I've got some reagents that may be worth a little bit of money. A few reagents? gems ones. Yeah. Magical reagents. What's that? Like, you know, dust, pixie powder. Dust? Shuffle I, like, pick up some sand, and I'm like, we all have dust. <laughs> Them teas, excuse. Some leftovers that I got from that one minister back in, uh, in, in, I can't remember the city's name. <laughs> I don't um, think you're going to impress them with dust. Anybody? Oh, we do. No. We have gold. Dust. We have gold. We I have a dime. Gold. Gold. We need to see how much gold we have. Also, uh, Theo, I'm uh, a little bit worried. I've thought on it, and I, I, um, I'm not so sure I have any um, abilities that we will be able to regrow your finger. Also known as Nicole looked at her spell list. <laughs> Maybe if we get into the city, we can find it. You could also and then try to meditate and reach out to Ilmater. That yes. was Lily suggesting. I don't know. If, sorry, that was me trying to be helpful. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Oh, we're gonna I do mean, that. I can also try my my big dude in the sky. He cool. Literally yeah. in the sky, he's the sun. He ain't that cool. He's pretty cool. I be mean, just mad because you got fired. <laughs> I quit. Thank you very much. We call that a sunburn. <laughs> <laughs> you all during your short rest can send some prayers up. Uh. And no one's fingers reappear. Oh darn! All right. Um, can I take a nap? Uh, the line like shuffles every once in a while, so. We need a floating hammock situation. That's what we need to work on next. I can just lie down. I'll drag you. Theo's secret goal is to sleep, but try to commune with uh, you know who. Oh, that GM isn't here this week, but I can I can oh. do my best. I just want my finger back, man. <laughs> I'm really attached to it where I was. <laughs> yeah, you not can... anymore. Yeah, Theo, you can try really... and take a nap. Aridin, if you want to drag him in the sand. He's a yeah, pretty sure. heavy sleeper. Easy. Uh, Theo, you can go to sleep and, you know, think of crows as you sleep. Um, until... You find yourself 
uh, you wake up and you're laying on a ratty old uh, like a, not a couch, a cot, like a like a. It, it's like a, like one of those fancy couches with only one side. They have a funny name. The therapist chairs. Yeah. No. Oh, he means the really pretty thing. Yeah, that like someone would lay on their side on if they're rich. Oh, the pay me like one of your French girls chairs. Yeah, one of those. Yeah. But it's ratty and falling apart, and some hay has been stuffed into it to refill some of the the cushion that has fallen out. Um, and you, and there's 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 some spiders and things crawling along it. Um, as you sort of wake up there, um, and you 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 see a familiar sight of Grandmother Crow sitting uh, in her rocking chair doing some needlework. Probably with bones for needles. Yep. <sighs> yes, my dearie. <laughs> you oh. called. Yeah, I was just wondering if you were free. I had such a nice time last time I was here, and I was wondering if I could make you some tea. <laughs> she says... The, the kettle's right there, my dearie. You can put it on the fire if you like. I'll try to make tea for her. You go over, and there's she's got a little like, like this hut is like half open and half not, and you do see like there's like a one of those like uh, pumps in the ground, like a, a spigot that you could pump some water out of. I mean this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you pump some out into the kettle, and it's thick and black. Kind of. She's nasty. drinking them on me. Yeah, you can't drink it. You only have four fingers. Yeah, see? Uh, and then you can hang the kettle over the fire in the corner. There's a little fake chimney built up around it that seems to be part of this hut. Uh, okay. Uh, I won't say anything until she talks to me again until, like, the tea is ready is my plan. If she, she says, breaks that, that's fine. She says, uh, well, don't wait for the tea, my dearie. Tell me why you're here. Uh, I just wanted to give you a status update. You know, I'm following this uh, quest for the world egg thing. It's taking me far and wide I'm in strange lands now. I can smell you're very close now. I like the way she smells. <laughs> well, then you must have a very strong nose. <laughs> it's one of my many senses, my dearie. Ah, then it would also be reasonable to know that you sense that I'm missing part of my hand. <laughs> oh, it's such a wonderful gift to me it is, my dearie, that you would suffer so for me. Yeah, uh, I was... I'm all about the suffering, but I need this hand so I could have more suffering later. Oh? Yeah. An I mean, exchange, I perhaps? I feel like the World Egg is a really good exchange for not having a horrible future and destiny, and it's okay if we could just add part of a finger, not even a whole finger, just part of a finger into that arrangement. Oh no, my dear, you misunderstood. The World Egg is your payment for me taking you out of that wretched future oh. that you did not want to be in. That deal is done. We cannot revisit it. But if you'd like to arrange a new one. It's only a pinky, not worth it. <laughs> well. I pray to you, alter the deal. <laughs> uh, right? <laughs> if you think of a way that would seem reasonable, let me know. <sighs> and I want to try to leave the dream. <laughs> and she says, well, there is one other pinky that I could give you. It, you. It's very, very similar. You wouldn't even notice the difference. Brothers. Uh, well, can I see it? Uh, you've seen it many times. All right. Um... <laughs> I just didn't know if it was something you could do, you know? I know you want this world egg, and you seem to not be able to get it yourself, and so I just, I don't know. I'd happily give you this other pinky. All right. It's gonna happen. It looks just like yours. You won't even notice the difference. Well. Practi the same in practically every way. Let me, let me think on it. Oh, no, dearie. You have until the tea is done brewing. 
and you hear the the kettle's already starting to whistle. Fuck. Can you see the future? <laughs> Did she answer that? She likes the bride. <laughs> can she see the future? And she says, pieces of it, my dear. Will my family live if I still don't have my pinky? <laughs> <laughs> oh, questions like that are so complex, my dear. Jake, I get it. Okay, <laughs> chill. I'm so stressed. <laughs> um... I think how Theo must feel. <laughs> I can't whistle that high. <laughs> that was pretty good. Thank you. Uh, you can tell that the the kettle is very nearing its boiling point. She says, "What do you? What would you want in exchange for this pinky?" Nothing at all. Free of charge. All right, that gives me the willies. I'm out. No, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you hear the kettle goes, like gets to the highest pitch, boom, and you, huh, you, you, you're awake. You're back in the desert. Oh, it was really weird. My pinky got itchy there for a minute, but it's Holy fine fuck, now. Really? <laughs> <laughs> that would have been so messed up. I shouldn't be allowed to whisper <laughs> to Jake. <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> oh. As soon as she was like, I don't want anything, I was like, it's a setup. <laughs> it's a setup. It's a setup. All right. Well... I'm still really depressed, but I'll see what I can do. All right, it's been a few more hours, and y'all are approaching the front of the line. Getting right up to the gates of Al-Zali. Really? Yeah. Only after a few hours? Yeah. Oh, okay, that's good. The line has gotten even, even longer. As you guys came up to the top of the dune, you can see it's just going forever. People are setting up camps around because they're looking at this line like, we're not getting in today. We'll camp up for tomorrow. Okay. Right? Like, people are coming from all directions here. Um, you guys got in the line pretty early. Um, really, only maybe, you know, 30 minutes, an hour after they they started opening the gates. So, uh, and as you get up to the front, the guards look over all of you. They give a particular, like, oh, to, to Barnum. He's got quite the unique appearance. Uh, wait, we had time in line. Can we discuss a potential... Plan. Oh, yeah, well you, well, you can't, Theo, because you were sleeping, but everyone else. <laughs> well, all right, fine. No, I don't have a plan. Um, well, we're going to have to figure out what they did with the Dom. Well, I was saying, what are we offering them is what I was trying to get at. Yeah. Oh, when we get up there? Oh. Yeah, well, like, we, we had gold, right? We have gold, but I'm seeing if there's anything better we have, because everybody seems to be bringing objects, not just gold. Mm. I have a diamond, but I would rather save that for a necessary time. Mm -hmm. Also known as one of you fuckers dies. Dude, <laughs> preach. Um, alright. You have me. One of you might catch the death. <laughs> Sacrifice Pharaoh. I thought we had some gems and shit, but I don't see none. In the list. All right, if nobody has anything better, gold it is, but... How much gold? I mean, do we, we could, like, present a magical item and then just not let them take it. Well, I was gonna say we could pretend to so, give them the genie Theo, as you're a asleep. <laughs> uh, what you guys have seen as you've been approaching the line and dragging Theo up um, as you get closer is that they're taking these items and putting them... It looks like there's maybe a cart or something just inside the gate. In the gatehouse. I mean, as soon as that cart gets full enough of of gold and jewelry and other valuable items, um, they take that cart away and uh, bring lo bring another one up. Well, where do the people go that are giving these items? Uh, once they give their items to the guards, they're let into the city. Oh. And they bring, you know, they've got their other stuff. They've got, you know, small carts full of things. People are bringing their stuff. Some people have nothing, but, well, you know, like, what's the, you know, the clothes on their back and the gift they bring. Um, some people go up and are, and are sent away. Um, and they sort of, they wander and they're sort of despondent. Others, like, start getting angry and the guards, um, you know, intimidate them down. Or you even see one case of someone gets angry and yells at the guards and, like, tries to push past them. And the guards push him down um, and, like, put their swords at him. And then he scurries away, like, 
So what we could do maybe is offer a valuable item and then maybe try to grab it back from that car. What if what? we... Hey, hey Barnum, if we took like a like a brick, could you make it look like solid gold? I... Word magic. I, you know, from from five feet, sure. If they look at it too close, they'll they'll notice. But yeah, mm. yeah I could do that. But also, I... feel like a brick of gold. Yeah. yeah. What um, like, is there anything in common with all the people who are sent away? You don't know, Theo. You're asleep. Uh, okay, sorry. <laughs> Is there anything in common with all the people that are sent away? They either have not enough gold or a, you know, not a very shiny item. Like, it just seems like they don't have enough. They're basically, they're looking at these, they're appraising them, testing them if they're fool's gold or whatnot, or, you know, fake jewelry. We're such hoarders, jewelry. we don't want to give up anything. <laughs> let's, let's do gold. Let's, let's, start, gold. let's start with gold and see what happens. How much gold? One copper piece. <laughs> That's zero <Copper>. gold. <laughs> Two copper piece. Still All zero right. gold. <laughs> Let's just go big. I'm going to say a number, and y'all just need to be like, okay, and trust that we have a shit ton of money, okay? Okay. 100 plat. Holy shit, that's a... For, for those of you who are not familiar with the D&D economy, one plat is 10 gold, so that is a grand. That's a lot of Oops. money. Let's start with like, money. Sure, let's start with like 40 gold and see what they say. 40 gold, bitch, you for real? They're giving like idols and stuff. Two, up and come. Think about it At this way. Like if, they're, if they're going for like 100 gold piece per person, then that's at least 500 for us. We don't know that. We don't know that that's the price. Let's get up there and lowball them and see what they say. All right, 50 plat. Negotiation. Or we could offer them something super exciting and steal it back. Also, like Theo, that. you're asleep. Right, sorry. Kit, shut up. I'm saying we would have discussed this <laughs> earlier. Here, hold on. I can fix this. <laughs> oh. oh. Uh, well, we can go with something shiny. Yeah. I think we should just give them a box of, like, 50 or so gold. I feel like that's reasonable. And then if they're like, not enough, go away, we'll be like, oh, my God, we gave you the wrong box. Sorry, here's all this other gold. Here's the we should throw in some grain, too. Yeah. They might like that. It's possible. All right. Theo, you wake up. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Lily started spamming the chat. with. Uh... I feel like 50 plat is suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> um. And you guys are approaching the doorway. And Aridin, are you uh, leading the way? Um, I feel like Baronum should, because he's got the he's okay. got the look going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They look up at you, and they're they, you see they're a little intimidated at first, but then they like you know they toughen up, and they say, "What have you brought to Al Zali as tribute?" We have brought riches plenty. Hmm, take a look. I put on a voice. Ching, ching, ching. <laughs> they, they, they. You hold the box forward. They open it and they, you know, give a quick count, and they say, "Well, that seems like enough to let you in, but uh, your retinue, they, they need their own." You think that these mere slaves are are any part of my retinue? No, they must come. They need to tend to me. This is just me. They are not seeking audience. If Sorry, they want guys. To... What? <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> if they want to enter Al Zali, they need tribute. How much did you give? Did you? Uh, well, I, you, we, we, you know, did we decide decide fifty or fifty gold? It was fifty, 50 gold. gold. Yeah, fifty, 50 gold. gold. Mm, fine, and then I take out a hundred. This should serve for them, lesser beings. They they give it a look over. They 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 sort of whisper among themselves and. They... Do not anger me! Tarry not! <laughs> Give me an intimidation roll. <laughs> With advantage, because you spoopy. I'll give you advantage. advantage. Sure, why not? Okay, cool. Tarry not! <laughs> Tarry not. Right. Yeah, that advantage plus one. Let me see what their insight is. I'd like to cower when he raises his voice. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's why I get advantage. They say... No, no, no. This is, 
This is simple. Each body that wants to come into Al-Zali must give equal tribute. Mm. So it's under more gold, right? Since your city is splendid, I accept. Yeah, he's already given 150. Oh, I, thought, I thought he went like... from 50 to 100. Oh. I, no, yeah, no, I did go from 50 to 100. I'll no, give so him like... It'd be 250 total is what he... Yeah, he's 250 is fine. Cool. Yeah. Still... You, right, you're pony up that. 250, and they, as you guys are like pulling up, they, they see how, how thick your, 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 uh, your coin sacks are and uh, how heavy. Don't look at my sack. <laughs> That's rude. And uh, they, they all start whispering like, oh, like oh, we should have asked for more. Um, and then they, you go to them and then you hand them the box and they say, this will do. Welcome to Al-Zali. And they set it on the cart. And 250, right? Send you in, yeah, 250 gold. Um, and you enter the gates of Al Zali. <laughs> uh, it's been long enough that that portcullis has been raised again. Um, and you come through the gatehouse and into a, an, a wide open I... uh, main avenue that leads up to this palace or temple uh, that you, parts of it seem familiar from before. Um, but in between here and there, all of these buildings of different sizes and shapes. Uh, you see that people are setting up shops inside these buildings, setting up, uh, you know, carts and things just to sell, just right in the middle of this avenue. Uh, lots of hustle and bustle going on already in the city, but still plenty of room to grow. Um, when we're going through that walk or archway or whatever, I want to keep trying Sending Stone to Koros. Uh, as you do, still no response. Okay, cool. Um... You you actually see that that uh, a few moments later, there there that cart that they just loaded full treasure is full, and they do push right past you, um, and they they don't go down the main avenue, and it's, it's they put a big tarp over it, um, and have a bunch of guards around it. They they sort of turn down a side street, um, you see, but they're heading up towards the palace with this uh, cart full of treasure. Are we headed to the palace? That's that's probably where Achman Ra is, right? I don't yeah. Know. Yeah. That makes sense to me. Let's follow that wagon. Sure. Sneak like. All right. I I need a a, a group stealth check. Are we actually I sneaking? Pass, pass without a trace. Oh yeah, we're sneaking. Go. <laughs> sneak like. Oh sorry. Uh, Pharaoh, just give me a d20 roll. I'll I'll add your modifiers. Okay. <laughs> I like that it's also a question. Oh yeah. So sneak. Everyone gets a plus ten on top of this. Excellent. Mm, nice. Let's see. Yep, it's Ooh. always gonna be me that needs it. Sorry! <laughs> <laughs> I only know how to roll threes and twos. I don't know, Pharaoh. It's a group check. <laughs> needs uh, needs more too. It is a group check, so as long as half of you passed, you're good. Um, so you all uh, sort of head off down this side street. It's much less busy on this street, a little harder to blend in. Um, but you you basically you find some groups that are moving around. You guys are following it at, at a distance that's far enough that you're able to sort of come down this side street. Um, without attracting any attention and, and follow. Um, you see, they lead down the length of the city. Um, and then when they get up there towards the palace, you see that there's a, like, they're going sort of on the side of the palace, and there's a, there's another set of gates there with some guards, and as the, the cart gets up there, the guards talk for a moment, they open the gates, and then the, the cart full of treasure goes in, and the gates close behind them. You're maybe a hundred feet away from these gates and able to see this. Um, from there, it sort of heads down and around the side of the palace, hard to see, but probably into, you know, like a, a service entrance or something towards the back or the side. Well, he probably would want to talk to us, right? Like, probably persuade him to, to get a meeting. Like, I don't think we should sneak in there. Because if we get caught, then, you know, there's the golems. They're... I don't see any golems around, right? Uh, so, right here you don't see any. If you look over towards the center of the palace, you do see there are two of these statues, these iron statues with these crocodile heads, and they are perfectly still now. They're statues again. Yeah, be careful with those things, guys. What do you think we should do? 
Stay I think you <laughs> Pardon? What you say, Brandon? Just stay away from those. I could try to, if they're magic, maybe I could dispel them, but I, I'm not sure. Well, no, I mean, we're, we're, we're fine right now. They're just statues. I'm just saying, heads up. They absolutely annihilated Adam. Um, I'm saying, well, like, we should, I'm, Achman Ra's in there, right? Yeah, we need to talk we need to, to him. Yeah, we got to do big okay. picture plan. Aridin's right. I think um, we know that magic is weirdly affected in this place. We've had experiences with that now. I'm not running into any more walls. Yeah, exactly. My point. So I think figuring out a plan. The goal is the talisman, right? We don't need anything else. So ideally, if we were in a different city, we would get the talisman and then, you know, teleport or dimension door away or something with our tricks. But we can't do that here. Well, the thing is, I feel like we're going to have to talk to Aquaman Ra because we're going to need to work out some kind of deal for Koros and Nadam, whatever happened to him. We need to figure out how to get them back. And I think that, I mean, breaking them out seems unrealistic. So with all these golems. Kind of agree. So we need to get to this Aquaman Ra. Any reason we can't just, like, walk in? That's what I'm saying. Do we want to just knock on the door? If smart. we go in and he's not willing to treat with us, he might capture us as he did our friends, and then we'd really be in trouble. Yes, but if we go in there and steal the amulet, then we have no way of getting the Damakoros back. And also, if we get caught, then we're for sure captured. <laughs> right now, it seems like we want both of our friends and a talisman and have nothing to give him. Well, but talk to him. Maybe he'll be willing to make a deal. I think we should vote. I, 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 I'm totally fine with voting. I just, he tricked us before intentionally. I don't think he wants to treat with us. He knows he has what we want. I only find out by talking to him. All right. Uh, as you guys are having this conversation about a hundred feet away from the gates, um, you hear the sound of uh, like a gong ring out. Uh, over uh, the city, um, coming from the palace. Um, and uh, right then, you see the doors of the palace open, um, and, and Achman Ra steps out. You see he's he's got less jewelry than you saw on him before. He's clearly put some of it into the city, um, but very clearly there that large amulet is still hanging around his neck. Um, and he steps out, and he says, uh, Thank you all for your contributions to Al Zali. Maj Tal Zali. Uh, and as he says that, uh, suddenly there's a rumbling. The whole city rumbles. And you see in the distance, some of the buildings grow larger, and the walls slide out as the city gets bigger. And the walls get further away, and buildings start appearing at the edges of the city um, as the city is growing. Unlike before, which where the shaking lasted for a few moments and a, and a few things would come out of the sand, uh, now this, this shaking is lasting for several minutes, and the city is growing immensely in this time. Um, you hear well, cheering well, from the people. Oh. Go ahead. How close to him are we? Uh, a couple hundred feet. You're like a block away from the center of the of the temple because you're on the side of it, um, and he's he's sort of up some stairs. There's a little like wall and some stairs that go up it, so he's he's above you and at a distance. So, there are we just going to try to steal the amulet from him or to fight him? Seems right. difficult. He's wearing it. Hey, he's a genie. He doesn't exactly need to shut his eyes ever, does he? He's a genie? Achman Ra's not a genie. Oh, Achman Ra's not a genie. Harun was a genie. Yeah. Achman Ra's just a dude. Yeah. A possibility. I recently um, believe I have uh, harnessed some more power from uh, Ilmater, and I believe that I can um, Dimension Door twice. Um, <laughs> you can jump, and jump again. I could jump in, grab it, and jump out. I don't know if you can in this city. 
that's very possible. Do we want to try some magic beforehand to see? Yeah. Probably Why a don't good idea. we go in one of these buildings or behind a building and you can try to like, I don't know. What, do you have like a simple cantrip or yeah. a spell like that you can try? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Let's go behind a building and you guys can something. go into an alleyway pretty easily. Theo, Theo would probably say, you know, easy magic, like make bread appear or some sparks. <laughs> no, make bread appear. I'll make Pharaoh happy. <laughs> I I don't I don't know how to make bread appear. Not Theo just doesn't understand magic. But I will go ahead and see if I can cast uh, Shield of Faith on myself. But you had to uh, create food or water. I. Do but that's a bit higher level. Ah, I see. Yeah, no, you don't want to use it. Right and now. I also yeah. didn't prepare it. Um, you cast shield of faith, and whoom, you've got a shield of faith. Okay, <laughs> I, I think I could. I, I think the issue was just when Baronum was trying to enter the wall. Oh, maybe I think the walls are magical. Yeah. So if we can find a site, and you're not going through any potentially magical barriers, you should be fine. <laughs> Alright. Yeah. Do you want to do that? Um, uh, you, if, like, how far can you go with that? You 500 feet. Feel the rumbling starting to slow because it's been a few minutes. Do it now while that's still happening and we'll cover your back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's do it. Um, are we going to prepare to run after? We're going to get out of here. Yeah, we'll just run out. Okay. I'm going to cast uh, haste on myself okay. really quickly. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to Dimension Door right next to Ogwin Ra. <laughs> and I believe only one of those is concentration, so it should be okay. Yep. <clears throat> Haste okay. is concentration, then, Dimension Door is not. So I'm you try to dig it off. You appear next to Ogwin Ra. He's startled as he turns. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the same time, you see those two iron, iron golems turn to face yeah, but, you. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, Can I grab it? <laughs> you grab the amulet. You feel like a, like an energy uh, pulsing through your arm and through the amulet as you do, uh, and you vanish. Oh. Well then. Hmm. Oh, what the second? No, no, no. It's fine. It's fine. Last time she took teleportation, she appared about a few minutes late. She'll she's going to be right here. Right. But hey, guys, remember what that amulet does? No. What does it do? Uh, well, we're trying to get it to help this city that's under attack. You transport it oh, to another yeah. dimension. I forgot. I forgot about that. Completely forgot about that. That means you can't touch it, but he's touching it. <laughs> and you know how to use magic stuff, and he clearly knows how to use magic stuff. You should be fine. I forgot. I don't think it was a ha you had to touch it thing. That doesn't make sense. The whole you, city you guys, has to touch as you are talking sort of in the side of the alley, um, you hear Ackman Ackman Ra call out. The rumbling has stopped, and he says, um, "I know you're out there. If you want the amulet, come inside. We will talk." Uh, he reaches a hand out and dismisses, and the, the golems turn, and their swords go back, and they turn back into statues. And he turns back and walks back into the temple, and the doors remain open. Well, I don't think we have a choice. Now Arena's gone. I, I, I think diplomacy is now the only option. I hate diplomacy. <sighs> I know. Hopefully he'll piss you off and you can swing your sword at him. Until then, let's Hopefully just try to get Arena back. Hopefully right. he won't chain us all to wheels. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully not. I, I, I th he doesn't seem like a wheel type. He seems more like a all become statue slaves type. I, that's comforting. Yeah. Super. <laughs> um, I'll start walking towards the doors. All right. Um, as you guys approach the stairs with the two giant iron golems there, um, and you start to walk up, uh, you're sort of wary of the golems but they do not move as you pass them and the stairs sort of wrap around this little fountain and up uh, and, and into the open doors that lead right into the temple that you recognize. Uh, the temple that was erected before this, those columns along the side that's got an open ceiling out to the sky um, and across it, um, you see there is that brazier that from before 
Uh, and right now it is overflowing with water into like this pool around it. And then from those pool there are tracks that run along the ground, and that water flows out. And you actually see out of the sides of the temple, it flows out into little tracks inside the, the walls and the railings that sort of run down and out into the city in various places. And you realize that these, these little streams that are all over the city, these, you know, like that are carved out in the stone up on the sides of the buildings and in the streets and everything, that is all the water flowing from the, the fountain at the center of the temple. Hey, Theo, try sticking your hand in the water. Magic water. Couldn't hurt. Probably is going to hurt. I stick my hand in. This water. It, my finger doesn't grow back. Your finger does not grow back. Ah, with a shot. Maybe try drinking the water. I'll take a drink of the water. Cool, refreshing, uh, nice water. <laughs> I'll put five plat in the water. Dude, are you burning our freaking money? <laughs> Hey man, a whole other person we could have gone through. We lost so much in one night for that chick. I don't care. No, it was nothing. It was like two emeralds. It was uh, hella gold. As you do, there's like a little rumble, and uh. If I put my hand in when it happens, is my hand healed? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a rumble as a uh, like some statue work pops out right here in front of the temple, um. And this, it starts to appear in the front of the temple. Um, Statue book. Yeah, statuary and shapes and colors. It, this, the front of the temple becomes even more beautiful than it was before from this 50 plat. Um, and your hand in the five water. Plat, five plat. Five plat, sorry. 50 gold. That's what my brain was saying. Am I not crazy? Uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, a little bit of stone comes on the end of your hand. A little stone pinky. It doesn't move. It doesn't have, the knuckle doesn't bend. But you have a, a solid stone pinky. Whoa! I don't see how it goes. It's like an infection. This place yeah, is well, going to it's better than have, not having anything, so we'll see. All right. All right, let's keep walking. As you come in the temple, I was going to say, so the, the, there's the brazier. It overflows into this little pool around it that flows out. And then behind it, you see there is a large throne raised up. Uh, and uh, Akman Ra is sitting in it. Um, lying on the ground of the temple, you now see as you come in, uh, in front of the brazier, right next to the pool, you see the unconscious bodies of Nadam and Koros. Do they look dead? They look unconscious. All right. That's why I'm asking. Like, do they look covered in blood? Like... They do not. Well, Nadam's got a little blood on him. That's fine. Okay, a lot of blood on him. He, he got pummeled. Um, but he seems ah. alive. He's breathing and stable. Hello, Aquaman Ra. And he says, uh, "Oh, sorry. I'll wipe off the eye makeup. You probably didn't recognize me." <laughs> and he says, uh, "So you have returned to Al Zali?" Yeah. It turns out that thing we were looking for that we told you about—it's uh, on your neck, right there. Found it. <laughs> he says, "I am aware." And he says, uh, "What?" Do you, what do you think gives you the right to come here and demand the treasures of my people? Your people? I, de I yeah, we demand no treasure from your people. And since when are they your people? They have come and flocked to my protection. To the, the protection, protection of, of this city. city. Not to he you. says at the same time as you. Yeah. <laughs> We're here seeking to protect another city. We believe the amulet can help with that. A lot more cities than one, in some ways. And he says, uh, And what has the empire, the old empire of Azamar, done for us in the deserts after the calamity? What was Gondor when the Westfall fell? <laughs> Dude, basically <laughs> nothing yet. No. But that's what we're hoping to change. Why should I give them that which protects us here? To protect them. Is all that's protecting the city really that amulet? I thought it was you and your divine gift. Oh no, this city is much more powerful than that. And I, and he takes the amulet and he pulls it around his neck and he holds it over the brazier. And he says, and I am much more powerful than that. And as he does, as the, the, the chain comes off of his neck, it reveals 
uh, not a human visage, but a uh, uh, the the hawk-like image, almost like an Aarakocra, but uh, straight up like is it Horus or Aquaman Ra? Ra, one or the other. Bird, horse, both bird face. Uh, like Egypt bird face image. That's him. And he's holding the amulet over the brazier, and he says, why should I not simply use this right now? Make the city greater. That's a good question. I'm sure that would help in the short term. But, but, but do you not have the gift of foresight? Yeah. We need to think big picture. We need to protect the state of the world. I'm sure you're aware of the threat in the north. From Roose Paul. West. West. Northwest. It's northwest of where we are. It's north we're in the nine deserts. <laughs> <laughs> I think you need to look at a map. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> well, I can't. My map is cut off on roll 20. <laughs> uh, and he says... Uh, the orcs would never survive the desert. That's not a threat to me or my people. The threats to me and my people are this desert, these lands, the unforgiving curse on the waters of the river, the roving bands of bandits and marauders that steal and pillage. Alzali offers us safety. I offer to these people safety. And all I ask... absolutely north, you liar. Look at this. To what? <laughs> From where we are? <laughs> a little bit. Y'all are, are here. He's up here. Yeah, he's up here. <laughs> all right. <laughs> and if, like, if what you sought was refuge in this city, why wait until now to claim it? And he says, I only learned of the city recently. I came here from rumors that I had heard. And I found that they were true. To, to be fair, it was a wishing well that gave a little bit of a drink when you popped in a penny before now. I mean... Um. And he says, uh, Kuaya's old masters exploited these lands, exploited these people for their own benefit. And that is not the kind of leader that I will be. I will unite these deserts, bring peace and safety. Then you should have no need for such a talisman. And he says, no, you're right. I don't. And he lets go. But, uh, but, uh, and the talisman uh, falls into the brazier. Can none of us try to get it? Would someone like to make a dexterity saving throw? Somebody speedy. I guess that'll be me. <laughs> Let me right. look at what I have. Fast. Uh, I cast. Oh yeah! Myself. Ooh, ooh, Pharaoh! Pharaoh should cast something. <laughs> Am go I Pharaoh. fast? Pharaoh, uh, you're lanky. Let's go. Okay. Oh, yeah. Pharaoh's lanky. We can give it a shot. Ooh, All right. ooh, can I try to grab it with a grappling hook and rope? Uh, no, you don't have that out. Oh, okay. What do I need to do to grab it? Uh, just give me a d20 roll. I'll add your... You have a plus two for a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Oh, I thought you were going to cast a spell. Oh, Arena, is your helmet helping? Or how uh, that on? I disappeared. Oh, you're right. I don't know if I have any spells that I can use here. You don't even know if you have spells. I don't... That's what I'm saying. Is like, could yeah. you rando cast a spell? I don't know. <laughs> uh... And Aridin, what about you? How can, do you I, do? I, can I try as well? Yeah, <laughs> you guys can both jive after it. Can I? Do I have time to cast bless on myself first? <laughs> Not really. No. Okay. <laughs> it's fair. Worth a shot. Woo! <laughs> Pharaoh, you leap. Whom? Just fall into the pool in front of the thing. You didn't even leap far enough. I jump off your shoulders. <laughs> Aridin dives over you. His hands wrap around the amulet and he vanishes. 
Oh yeah. So as a present of fire, how many <laughs> fire damage do we take? I got it. <laughs> However, as his hands hit it, the impact does sort of knock it off course, and it doesn't fall into the brazier. <laughs> it falls into the pool of water behind it, pff, right in front of you, Pharaoh. Don't touch it. <laughs> Did you? Is it just the amulet? Did you touch the amulet? Aridin's hands got on the amulet part, not the the chain part. Just grab the chain or grab it with fabric like that. Yeah. Do I have sleeves? You've got a robot. Yeah, you got sleeves. Okay. If that if it's in front of Pharaoh and I saw Aridin disappear, I'm gonna bowl try to bowl that guy over. Try to bowl Aquaman Ra over? Yeah, I'm gonna run into him and be like, you bitch! Like I'm so mad. Right <laughs> Alright, give me a strength athletics check. Traitor! I'll say traitor, that's better. <laughs> Strength athletics, mm -hmm. okay. which he will oppose. If I can not roll a two or a three. Dexterity acrobatics. Oh my god! Ooh. I said not a two or a three, and I rolled a one. That's fair. Hey, wait! I can re-roll a failed thing, right? That's a saving throw. Damn it, Jim! You charge up at Achman Ra. He sidesteps, grabs you, and throws you down into the pool. All right. Whatever. Can I action surge and, and try to says, get him again? No, you're down on the ground, and he says, he says, I brought you in here to talk. Yeah, and you took my brother. <laughs> Your brother took himself. He used the amulet. That's what it does. You've been able to touch it. Why? And he says, I've learned how it works. A secret I'm sure you're unwilling to share. Um... Pharaoh, are you going to grab the chain of the amulet down in the pool, or...? Uh, not as long as Theo's having this conversation. Oh, I was hoping that you would do it while I was having Theo's this trying. Theo was trying to distract Achman Ra. Oh, okay. Then, uh... Yeah, I should grab the chain. Yeah, you, could, you, have, a, you, have, your, you have a robe on, so you can, you can, like, roll your sleeves up and grab the chain. You reach down into the pool. It's not very deep. Wrap the, wrap the fabric around my hand. Yeah, grab... I'm saying roll the sleeve down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sleeve down, get the fabric around your hand, and grab the chain, and you, you are holding it, and you have not vanished. Cool. What's it in its pockets is? No, I'm just kidding. What does it have in its pockets is? Kind of precious. Hold it out at arm's length. And... All right. Uh, Barnum, what are you doing? Um, I, I, I will try... Well, uh, I mean, he's already got the, the, the chain. Um... I'm still a genie. I'm just going to look like big and distracting and imposing off to the side, and he's going to be confused as to who I am and be in the back of his mind like, who is that guy? What, what's going on? Maybe I'll be further distracting. That's it. Okay. Good. <laughs> Alrighty. All right, back to, back to you, Theo. What were you saying last? I just, he's a jerk and he tricked us. And I say, he said, oh, I've learned how it works. That's why I don't disappear when I touch it. And I was like, I'm sure there's a secret you're unwilling to share. And he says, and he says, uh, if you gave me reason to teach you, I would. But all you've done so far is come in and demand that I give you something of mine for nothing in return. And all you've done is lie to us since we met you. Why would you... I did not lie to you. Way? The amulet came from the Eternal Palace. I'm sure it did. And King Haru knew the way to the Eternal Palace, did he not? I'm sure he did. What would you have of us? He says, make me an offer. But what could such a wise and great leader need from such poor, humble adventurers such as ourselves? I'm, I'm looking for a glow bag. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sick of this shit right now. And my brother is gone. And my paladin is gone. The other paladin's gone. And my finger <laughs> is stone. And everything sucks. He says, uh... I will not be insulted in my palace. I would. I wish to make you an offer, but I know not what you need. Take your amulet and go. You are no longer welcome in Al-Zali. You are no longer welcome in all the nine deserts. Is that the neighbor city? All the nine <laughs> deserts, all Zali. <laughs> when the power in the west is defeated, the amulet chuckles. Remember who saved you. And then we'll leave. Bring quarters and da, da, da. Oh yeah, I'll pick up their bodies on the way out. <laughs> One each shoulder. <laughs> yeah. 
as thanks. you walk out, uh, Ackman Rot looks at you, Barnum, and says, "Nice seeming." <laughs> 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 As you guys walk out and the doors shut behind you. How rude. <laughs> oh, have like you become a great and powerful genie? <laughs> As you uh, exit, you see that those golems have moved and have walked right up to the doorway as you exit and uh, appear to be ready to lead you out. Great. This yeah. place is Did not very warm. Out? Uh, let's do a quick. Meanwhile, Pharaoh is holding the amulet okay. in his, in his sleeve. My body I possibly can. With the chain. Far away. <laughs> let's do a quick. Meanwhile, go to the side. Irina, you go to grab that amulet to pull it off of him. You find yourself floating inter Astra Nox. You have been here once before. Oh, uh, interplanar customs? Not interplanar customs. Uh huh. Uh, Inter Astronox, the night between stars, the place yes, between okay. the different realms. The interplanar medium. Exactly. <laughs> um, and you're sort of floating, and you see that there are these... You're floating above Azamar. You can actually see the continents below you and the shapes. You can even see the desert below you, but you're floating sort of in this etherealness above it. Uh, and you see that there, there's, there are these... This, this, there's this small tether, this little beam of light coming up from Azamar off to this, you see in the distance, this floating city, this beautiful, grand, floating city. It's a circle, um, and the city rises in the center with this massive tower. Um, and after a moment, you recognize the city. Uh, it's the city of Mesro. Mm. Um, and just as... Uh, you just as uh, Zavarin had thought, the city of Mesro appears to be suspended somewhere else in this sort of demiplane above and away from Azamar in safety. Mm -hmm. um, and you find yourself sort of floating along this little uh, trail of light towards Mesro. Hmm. Eridan, okay. moments later, whoo, you snap also into this beam of light inter Astronox, floating alongside Irina. Oh. Hey. <laughs> hey. Uh, I was I was trying to catch you. Uh, yeah. I forgot thanks. about this part. Where are we? Uh, in the middle of kind of nothing. Also, yeah, I uh, forgot about the fact that that's what the amulet does. Good job. High five. <laughs> that would be the city, yeah. Yeah. Looks good. Yeah, it does. Looks safe here. Um, as it's coming closer and closer into your vision, you can make out uh, all the Uptau shapes and things in the city. Uh, you were a big Uptau fan, as I recall. Amazing! <laughs> um, and um, the amulet seems to be... There's the amulet. The, the beam of light seems to be taking you right up through a window in the this tall tower in the middle of the city. And as you do, you sort of drift down until you find yourselves standing in what looks like a throne room. Um, you remember being here before on the ground. There's a giant mural of the city of Mesro. In the ruins of Mesro that you were in before, that mural showed um, a lively Mesro with people in it moving about. This is the opposite. The mural shows you a ruin of Mesro. But as you look up and around this throne room, you see that it is, it is filled with people. There is um, a, a king sitting on uh, the throne. Um, and there are people about. Uh, and as you sort of land onto the, the mural in the center of the room, there's, there's a few attendants to sort of catch you and let you help you catch your, your gravity as you start to have weight again. Um, and uh, the king, in a booming voice, says, Welcome to Mesro. He says, What brings you to our fine city? Mostly accident. <laughs> There have been a few like you who have come before. He says, you come from the deserts, then? Yes, we do. Uh, and he says, then you will find this place a great oasis. We have food and water plenty. No roving bandits or pillaging marauders. You will find safety 
in Mezra. We ask but one thing, and that is peace from you. I do not know, and it were claim to know, the kind of people you were before, but here in Mezro you will live a new life. You will be reborn. Of course. Um, I, we thank you for your hospitality. Um, is there no way to return to the world? Not that this place isn't incredible, but we do have friends that we wish to um, ensure their safety. He says... Um, Few have asked before to return to the surface. It is possible, but why would you wish to return to the desolate lands there, forsaken by the gods? We offer you peace and plenty here. There are you people there who need our help. Your old lives. He says, ah, I see. People that did not make it make the journey with you. Correct. Those that reside there are still in our hearts, and we wish to help them. I always give them a few minutes, but it's not looking yeah, like they it. Yeah, they may show. <laughs> and he says, uh, you would abandon paradise for your friends? I mean... How nice paradise we're talking. You kind can of hit his arm, Aridin's arm. Yes. See yeah. out the <laughs> window behind you, and like streets are paved with gold. Uh, people are dressed really nicely. Everyone seems happy. Like it's, it's the music that plays. It's the music that plays in Red El Dorado mm -hmm. when they come out of the trees and they see it the first yep, time. That's exactly <laughs> what it's like. It, you really feel like you are looking at a utopia. I mean, we could always just like. Give them a few hours, right, Arena? They might be coming here. Just probably a lot we can learn here. <laughs> they have a great library. A great library. I'm sure they do, but I don't want to do puzzles. We can all return after we save our friends. We do have an amulet that's transporting us here. Come on. And he says, "You will find it harder to return once you have left, Mesro." One before has returned this way. Who? And he says, a young man. His name was Achman. Get out of town! <laughs> he saw Mesro. He lived here for a time until he decided that he had to return to bring a bit of paradise to try and bring a bit of paradise back to his people. He could not stand to leave them suffering. And the amulet was helping him doing do that? Uh, and he says, the amulet is what brought him here. He cannot return that way. Nor will you be able to. Hmm. I feel like we might be able to get some valuable information here. I feel like we shouldn't cut and run away. Uh, perhaps we should do some investigating before we return. Don't be hasty. <laughs> is he saying that the longer they stay in Mezro, the harder it is to go home? Uh, no, he didn't say oh. that. Okay. Um, but yeah, if, if, once you go back, you cannot come via the amulet again. That's fine. Let us investigate here, and then perchance we will return at the same time. It's always possible. Yeah. Weirder stuff has happened. Besides, if they really need us, they can just, you know, touch the amulet and be here too. Yeah. Assuming they didn't all die. No <laughs> or that the amulet got destroyed. Because I didn't actually see what happened to it after I tackled it. Well, if it didn't blow up when I touched it, then probably still there. All right. He 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 says, welcome to Mezor then. And then uh, some attendants lead you uh, off to a side room, um, which you see is like a, like a large bathhouse kind of room. Um, 
where they they they, they take your things, um, if 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 you will let them. Um, they set them aside and sort of hang them up. Um, they take your, uh, they uh, you know lead you off into different private rooms to change, um, and they bring you into these large this large bathhouse, and you can all get uh, get clean. Uh, Isn't there like some like cleansing ceremony with like seven sacred oils and shit? Absolutely, after? <laughs> there are some seven sacred oils and yeah. shit. The seven sacred oils of serenity. It's like totally Mesro tradition. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they 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 give you these. You know, after you're you're, you're you've been cleaned up, um, and you're in this in the bath for a while, and they use the seven oils and all this and that. They give you these these robes that look like the other robes you've seen here. They're not not everyone's is the same, but they're the same sort of style. Um, they give you your choice of different colors. There's all sorts of fun colors. Ooh, oh. I, I want um, I'll I'll dark red. blue. So you guys said at the same time I didn't hear either of you. Her red, me dark blue. Got it. Uh, red and blue, ooh, like the mages. Oh. Um, ooh. <laughs> uh, they give you the nice robes, um, and they say, uh, uh, we will clean your things, and you will find them in your in your new residence. Um, and they, pretty nice. they they lead you down, um, and uh, you come down the stairs in the bathhouse um, out to the, where the front gates are of the tower. Um, uh, it's a different path than you took before when you were in the tower. Um, as you come out there, um, there was a woman there. Um, what is her name? Somebody give me a name. I don't have my list of names up. I don't know. Nala or Elena. something? What did you say? I heard Nala and Lena? Elena. 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 I like that. Elena. All right. no. She says, my name is Elena, and I will show you around the city of Mesro. I'm 2D. <laughs> um, and she she leads you out the gates um, and, and starts to show you around. The first place she's going to take you is is uh, the, the market. And she says, I'm sure you're hungry after your journey. Please, all of the food here is free for all of the citizens of Mesro. This place is dope. And you see there's all sorts of food being cooked around, all different kinds and things. Do I see any, like, traditional Barovian stew? Uh, you might not find traditional Barovian stew, but you do mm. find... Because um, traditional Barovian stew is basically, like, hot water with some dead rats in it. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, <laughs> you find Maybe some various kinds of stews. Everything looks top quality ingredients really delicious as you come over and you're looking and they're, they're like do you want to try some like like someone offers you some and you can you can have a little taste and it's it's just all fantastic and amazing i'm gonna have some selenite chowder <laughs> they have uh not exactly like the selenite and chowder you had in selenite but that that uh seven fish stew six fish stew i think of seven seven, seven fish, fish stew <coughs> it's on it's on my wiki i can look it up <laughs> it's canonical now. Um, you have some some number of fish stew, Selene in style. Which I'm I think is the, the creamy one, right? right now. Sorry. As opposed to the tomato one that is the Tartosian style. Yes, yes. Yeah. Selene is cream. Yeah. That's my Get that out of here. <laughs> right. C Selene cream. T Tartosia tomato. Yep. Italy, um, and she takes you around to various other places in the city, and it's just, it, it, it very clearly is a utopia. Here's where they, they do art, and here's where they do music, and here's where the theater is, and here's uh, where people live, and uh, it, it really seems like a very, very wonderful place. Um, we'll do another quick meanwhile. Um, Theo, Barnum, Pharaoh, uh, you are being led out of the city. Um, by these giant iron golems with crocodile heads. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. They're going right down the main thoroughfare. And so as they do, like, people are, like, backing away and, like, pulling their carts back to make room. Um, and everyone is, is sort of in shock and awe. They're, you know, like, uh, not sure what's, what's going on, but they see that you're being led out of the city. I feast your eyes, your foyers. <laughs> are you saying that in your genie form? <laughs> Yeah, I'm like I'm muttering to my friends. Oh yeah, I guess I'm still oh, in I thought form. I thought if you shouted that, I was gonna back you up and be like, "Yeah, voyeurs," and then <laughs> whisper to you and be like, "What the fuck is a voyeur? <laughs> is that a big insult? Where you're from? Is that a dwarvish insult? Did I learn my first dwarvish insult?" Yeah, halfling insult. Don't don't like those. Okay. Bunch of sneaks and peeks and you know 
eavesdroppers. Um, and eventually they lead you right up to the front gates, uh, where you are sent back out into the desert. Okay, um, I'm carrying the two bodies, but I'm going to yep. say, you know, we need to make camp somewhere or teleport back to Zavarin now that we have this. We need somebody with greater magical abilities than we have if we're going to recover Irina and my brother. I wish I could argue. Yeah. Um, Baronum, are you able to teleport us back to Zavarin, or is that not possible? Uh, tomorrow, sure. Need to take okay. a little bit of a nap. That's oh, fine. no, wait. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. I can teleport us. Yeah, I didn't use that spell slot, just the lower ones. You okay, used cool. teleport today already, this morning, to get I must here. not have registered it then. <laughs> How many slots do you have at that level? At seven? Just one. Okay. Just one. Yeah. So, yeah, you teleported uh, from. Uh, King Haroon's beetle to Al Zali. I I suppose I could teleport us right away if if we're not worried of anything on the other end. But but just know that that's it, we're, we'll be done. I forgot I have an eight level spell slot. Oh, we're level yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, what is the distance on it? Uh, anywhere on the plane that we're in. Oh damn! They changed it. Yeah. That's yeah, great. Yeah, we're trying yeah. to get back to where Zavrin was. We know where he started our teleporting from. So it was a teleportation yeah. circle. So mm -hmm. yeah, the, the limitations are all about uh, where, like, if I know the place and am um, familiar. So it's a permanent always... circle whose sigil sequence you identified when you left yeah. there. So there is no chance of falling off target. Yeah. Um. Great. So yeah, you can you grab hands Fair with not. with everyone. It's just the three of us right now, but yeah. <laughs> and the two bodies. And the two I, bodies that are on my shoulders. It's, it's really the hardest teleportation thing. You just snap your fingers and boom, we're in the teleportation circle. <laughs> <laughs> one action. I, I didn't realize it was one action. That's yeah. Fast. Um, uh, Pharaoh. You're holding Burnham and Theo's hands. As the teleportation circle starts to take them away, no. and they sort of rise up, and you don't, and then they go out of your reach, and the teleportation does not work. You are left behind in the desert. Wait, who went away? Pharaoh. Oh. You two, Theo, Barnum, whoosh, you have left the nine deserts. Oh, man. What Something. about the bodies? The bodies on your shoulders? Whoom, coming with you. But Pharaoh didn't come with. Something has anchored Pharaoh to the nine deserts. Hmm. Curse. Come up. Probably related to why he lost his memory. Where'd the half elf go? What happened to him? I can't go back and get him. No, let's ask Zavrin about what to do, though. He may have advice. Fred didn't have like a magic collar on that we forgot to take off, right? Pharaoh's also <laughs> the one holding the amulet, so. Yeah, I have the amulet. Fuck, really? <laughs> oh, shoot. Wait, shit. Are you for real? <laughs> Well, so, Arena, let's just chill okay, here wait, for a while. Wait, wait, wait. Can you teleport yeah. us back? Extra long vacation. <laughs> so, Theo and Bernum, you find yourselves standing on the roof of Zavarin's building in Isik. It's it's that square-style Moroccan architecture. You see the palm trees up and around. You see the larger building in the distance that you recognize uh, as where Interplanar Customs was. You see that the, you know, the, where the river sort of goes off and the water falls off the cliffs here. You can see out on the ocean. It's a beautiful view up here. Nice, clear, middle of the day. Um, but, uh, yeah. Pharaoh is not there. And oh, the Pharaoh, amulet is not with you. back? He didn't come with us in the teleportation, and he kept the amulet. I mean, this... can, can you get us back? No, not today. Is Zavrin here? Zavrin is Zavrin. not immediately right here. I'm literally going to start shouting for this bitch. Be like, Zavrin, get out here. All right, we'll do a quick meanwhile. Hey, Pharaoh. Hey. Uh, you find yourself standing in the desert holding this amulet, uh, and everyone's gone. Hmm. Uh, well, shit. <laughs> do you not teleport? <laughs> what would you like to do? I guess a spell. <laughs> uh, it, well, I can't go back to the city, and I don't want to just hang out in the desert, so... I don't think I can go back to the city. We were kind of escorted out. 
Uh, You're not sure how much of that was directed at you? Because you didn't really know who that guy was. And he was talking with a familiarity to all of them. You could also find, just pick a direction and walk. But if I wander off... Hmm... This is the most free you've been in a long time. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> but I have this amulet mm -hmm. that's very valuable to them for some reason. Yeah, and you uh, do know yeah. that, that, that that line, they're looking for things of value. Yeah. To be led into the city with nice, fresh, clean water. Yeah. Hmm. Teleporting only. Yeah, everybody cold. who has touched that amulet has disappeared. Pardon? Everybody who I've seen touch that amulet has disappeared. Correct. They just mm. vanished. So, well. Can I don't want the guards to disappear. Maybe I do want the guards to disappear. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. How can I turn this amulet into bread? Uh, you're not sure. You do fountain. see. You do see. Sort of nearing the front of the line. You do see. Like there's there's a family there, and they're standing around. And like you see what they're holding as their tribute, and it's you know it's not going to be enough. They've got like a few scattered copper and silver pieces, and like a loaf of bread, uh, and like a fish, and like this this looks like what they're going to offer up to the guards, and you know that that's not going to cut it. Hmm. Well. I'm hungry. Do you want? I could go for some bread. <laughs> want to trade? And they and they look at you and they say, "But that thing looks looks priceless. It could it could get you into the city." And then the 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 wife nudges the husband, says, "No, oh, of co of course we'd be happy to trade. But uh, you, what would you want for this 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 you know this this you know bit of jewelry?" Trinket. Uh -huh. What were, you, what were you going to offer the guards? Well, uh, and the, the husband holds forward. He's got, like, a loaf of bread and f a fish in one hand and then, like, a handful of loose copper and silver in the other. They say, well, this is what we've got. Arena, we're getting traded for a loaf of bread. Well, yes, yes, we are. <laughs> I can't eat this thing. Uh, you, you can eat this loaf of bread. Uh, you, you can even... I'll throw the copper and silver in, too, and the fish. If you throw it all in, you got yourself a deal. Deal! <laughs> he, he, you know, heaps it onto you and reaches out to take the chain, because that's where you're holding it from. Uh, and he grabs the chain. He says, Hunt, we're going to get into the city! She says, I know! <laughs> thank you, thank you, kind stranger, thank you! And you've, you've got, you're standing there with your bread, your fish, and your handful of copper and silver. Hmm. <laughs> Square deal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hmm. I have no idea what the amulet does, right? You don't really know, except that you've seen when people have touched the core of the amulet, they've vanished. Aridin and Irina. Have people been concerned when they vanished? Your, your party seemed to think... So Theo and Burnham seemed to think that... They didn't seem devastated when they disappeared. They seemed to think that they maybe... Would, could come back or something, right? They were like, well, we'll just get them back later, right? I'm pretty sure I said out loud what it did. I don't know if Pharaoh was listening, though. Uh, it's you, not fun. You did hear that what they wanted the amulet for at some point was to whisk a city away somewhere else? Hmm. Like, I'm kind of stuck here in the desert. Yeah. Uh, like, and the amulet doesn't seem to be terribly harmful. Aside from making me go away. So uh, so I would like to grab the amulet back. All right. You go to grab it, and he's like, what do you do? I thought we had a deal. And then you touch the amulet, whew, and you vanish. Do I still have my bread? You still have your bread and your fish and your handful of copper and silver. Great. And you find yourself drifting along a light to a distant city. Uh, we'll do a quick meanwhile. Um, uh, Irina and Aridin. Oh, yeah. Um, you were given a tour of the city. It is fantastic. It really fe it seems like a true utopia. All of, everything is 
free. Everyone is sharing everything. People spend their days uh, doing art and leisure and sports and whatever they feel like. Um, you see that it's just really a fantastic place. And at the end of their tour, they lead you up to these these apartments, these uh, up the stairs to these, you know, in this beautiful, beautiful building, you know, with gold filigree everywhere, into these large open uh, apartments for each of you, right next to each other, doors right next to each other. Um, you go in, you see your stuff is all there. It has all been cleaned and polished. Um, and uh, and your, your clothes have all been washed. Um, you, as you go in, you see that like there's a closet full of, s of several robes of several different colors in the Mezroan style. Um, yeah. When we were getting our tour, was there a library? Yes, yeah. absolutely. absolutely. I'd like to go, I'd like to spend my vacation at the library! Go to the library, friend! A lot of, a lot of Avatar references tonight. Yeah, really. I think it's like my fourth one. It's true. There's gonna be like a an owl spirit thing in there, right? Yeah. Do you guys you load your 10, things. stuff back up, or...? Uh, I mean, I might as well fit in, wear the robe. Okay. You didn't see anyone carrying weapons on them through the city, so... Yeah, I won't do that. Yeah. In fact, your tour guide said that, like, there's no express rule against carrying weapons, but people don't, because they don't need them. There is no war in Mesro. Here we are <laughs> safe. Here we are free. <laughs> Doing great. Um, yep. uh, so yeah, you can, once you're all settled, um, you get your stuff together, they, your, your tour guide leaves, um, and then you're free to go about Mesro as you like, so you can head right to the library. Uh, it's a grand... Do we know you coming? You want to do your own thing? No, I'm with you. Let's go to the library. Grand, beautiful building inscribed with golden mazes all around it. Um, you know, great tribute to Uptau, and as you come in, there are scrolls upon scrolls. Um, you see people are out reading them, and uh, there's lots of natural open light in here. Um, it's, it's really a beautiful place. Is there, like, a librarian, someone who can direct us? Yeah. yeah. Maybe. There's a there's a there's an old old woman, uh, and she she brings her glasses up on her nose, and she says, oh, "Welcome to the library of Uptau. How can I help you?" Hi, we're new here. Uh, I was wondering if you could direct me to the history of Azamar section. History of Azamar. Hmm. Yes, an interesting topic. Uh, that would be. And she, she, she sort of looks up and points up to, like, up a floor and over there and names the section. Um, Histories of the East. Thank you so much. Um, if you have a War of the Nine Deserts, perchance, that's Nine where I would Deserts? Be. It wasn't yeah. the deserts. It was just the Nine Kingdoms, I think. Perhaps oh. you mean the Nine Kingdoms? Although I've never heard anyone yeah. refer to the... Their farmland is deserts. Kingdoms, kingdoms, yes, yeah, sorry. Yes, uh, scrolls on Ku'aya. Again, histories of the East. Very well. Oh, kitty. You guys head up to the histories of the East section. What are you looking for? I would like to look for information on, uh, well, Arena, do you want to split this up? You can look into the nine deserts, and then I want to look for anything about Bruce Paul or anything like that that I can find. Mm. Sounds good. All right. Uh, cool. Why don't you give me investigation checks? Okay. And specifically, if possible, I'm trying to find anything about um, large, like magical features of the Nine Kingdoms. Any, anything along those lines? Yeah. yeah. Erdem forgot how to read. Uh, Irina. I can't read. Nice. Can't read. Erdem, <laughs> you find no mention of anyone named Roos Paul. Uh. Which you find peculiar. Because from what you've heard about Roos Paul, what people have said about Roos Paul is that he's some sort of ancient evil or something. Maybe had uh, a different name. Been around a long time, but nothing. No records. Um, Irina, uh, you were looking for uh, things about magic in there. You do mm -hmm. um, find a few things that talk about um, Kuaya behind the illusions. Um, and that uh, long ago, Mesro made a deal with Kuaya, with the gemstone dragons, mm. uh, specifically with Ryza the Eternal, mm. um, 
to save Mesro uh, just before uh, the Calamity struck. It is, the book doesn't say before the Calamity struck, but looking at the years. You know. Um, could I also look for any mention of um, uh, the history of the Arcane Circle and mention of, of the Zundavirant during its ranks? Uh, you can. Go ahead and give me an investigation roll. These are good questions, y'all. Yeah. You think the Calamity was, like, the price for Mesro being transported here? Yeah. Um, you are absolutely certain that none of these books mention Vizzer and Devere. Okay, thank you. Uh, I want to go find that librarian and ask her to help me. <laughs> <laughs> um, she she comes up and helps you. She has her, like, like binder of reference. and It's like an index of scrolls and things. I'm worried I'm and... spelling Ruspal wrong. <laughs> And she looks and she says, no, I, I find no records of any Roosball. Uh, do you know anything Capsiac else about this fellow? Uh, ancient, powerful sorcerer. Ancient, powerful evils. Uh, she goes down the list and, you know, and starts, like, naming, you know, like, like, uh, like, a Sararak. Uh, no. I need another A. Um, uh, uh, King Barov. No, no. Uh, these, these are people Azazel, that we've yeah. dealt with. They suck. So. <laughs> she goes down the list. No, no ancient powerful evils by the name of Ruspal. Anything that fits, like, necromancy? Mm, necromancers. She flips to a different index. Uh, a Sararak. Again, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She goes down. Uh, I, I can't think of any. Uh, she says there is one. Ah, uh, oh, shit. What's the name? I was going to make a reference to a character that I had once who was a necromancer, but I can't remember his name. Uh, Rothbar. There's one Rothbar. Nah. Uh, no Roos Paul. Similar, but wrong. No, no, no record of, of any Roos Paul existing in the East, at least up to a hundred years ago or so. Our, we don't have any records of, of, the, of Azamar. Since then, seeing that we've been separated for some time. Yeah, that's true. But uh, no, if no, no ancient evils. I, w where did you hear of this this Ruspal fellow? Um, he's he's been around, kicking up a little bit of a mess in Azamar lately. Oh, don't worry about that, dearie. You're here now, and you're safe. You don't have to worry about ancient evils and oh, no, dust just being kicked up in your eye. There's no dust in Mesro. Purely to satisfy my curiosity. Of course, I, He's very I understand secretive. curiosity. Well, all right. Thanks for the help. Anything else y'all would like to do tonight in Mesro? Let's go to a festival or some shit, dude. <laughs> we gotta throw a hella sick. Concert. I feel like we should go get massages. That's absolutely. I think we should. You you guys head off to the spa. You just had your baths, which feels nice. But you go and get you can go and get some nice massages, and that is where we will leave y'all. For if you drink in Mesro, do you wake up hungover? <laughs> oh. uh, Theo and Barnum, uh you see Zavarin come up the stairs and he says, Shh, I heard you. No need to shout. <laughs> where, where is the rest of your party? Where is the amulet? Some of them are in the amulet. The amulet is back in the desert. When we teleported, the person who was holding it couldn't travel with us. We're not sure why. Send us back, quickly. There's still time. I only have so many of these spells, you know. You just so, hurry it up, of okay? Of course I know. <sighs> All right, fine, fine. Uh, we'll retarget that circle, and he starts tapping the runes. Ooh, I want to look at them and try to see if I know what they are. And yeah. like memorize you recognize them, them as the room. runes that target that same teleportation circle that you arrived in, in the ruins. Oh, yeah, sorry. I used that. No, we and don't want to be in the city, though. You do not go anywhere, and he says... That is strange. Did something happen to the teleportation circle I sent you to? Oh, you mean that a giant city sprung up where it used to be? Mm, yes, what? that happened. Excuse me? Yeah, you heard me. This crazy evil guy. Don't worry about it. We just got to go and get the thing. Some peasant guy says, has it right now. I do, not have a <laughs> I do not have another circle in the nine deserts that I can target. 
can you just imagine yeah. a giant city made out of a well that rose from the sand in the desert? There's only one of them. Should be fine. He says it would be <laughs> quite dangerous. The other one. I'll, I'll the rest of the nine deserts. I'm not sure where that one is. Hopefully it doesn't look the same. All right. He's Are you going to take Kors and Nadam? A description. No, here. we're going to leave their bodies with Zavrin. <laughs> Three way party split. <laughs> I don't give a shit. I need to get the shit back from this dummy. Crocodile faced golems all right. on the walls. Uh, all right, Barnum, roll me a D100. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> okay always bad when they say that. It's it's always bad. Picture. This calls for physical reagents. <laughs> Absolutely. No, no, no drawing pictures. Okay. There's the D100 pieces. Drawing a picture is still just a description. Oh, okay. It's a visual description, but. It's not having viewed it or seen casually. 70. 70. I don't know if that's good or bad. You are so weird. You suffocate in the sand. I don't think it's very good when I have to die. give him a hand description. <laughs> do, do, do. Oh, boy. All right. Oh. <laughs> you are Can off I? target. You and your group appear a random distance away from the destination in a random direction. The distance off target is 1d10 times 1d10% of the distance that was to be traveled. Oh. So oh, first... No. Oh, no. Bernam, I'd like you to roll 1d10 for the percent of distance traveled while I pull up the map to measure some distances on it. All right. Mm, dear. All right, good decisions. <laughs> you got a four for the first D10. Four percent times, give me another D10. Seven. All right, four percent times seven. Well, I guess I can multiply them. 28 percent of the distance traveled from Isik <laughs> uh -oh. to oh, Al-Zali <laughs> is roughly uh, 750 miles. All right, some things call for physical dice, but D360 is going to be have to be in roll 20. <laughs> 750 miles uh, times 0. 0.28 is 210 miles uh, in a random direction. Yeah, give me a, is a D360. <laughs> some zeros up. Uh, I'm going to start with, oh, you want, do you want zero to be north or do you want zero to be... I, was gonna I have guess zero unit could be the direction I was trying to go, you're right. Either way, it's off. <laughs> I was going to do unit circle and start, yeah. start with east. So 270... <laughs> That's south, right? 180, 90, yeah. right? Uh, you are 200 miles south. Wait, wait, should it be north if you go clockwise? You go counterclockwise on a unit circle. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. You're right. <laughs> uh, 200, yeah, so that's okay. about, let's see, 400 pixels on this map. Oh, God. Do, do, do to the south. Ooh, that's interesting. Let me get my other map out. Mm. So it's not in like the middle of an ocean. So you're not in the ocean, <laughs> thankfully. Just a lake. That's <laughs> you find yourselves in the sand sea. Great. What? So sort of an ocean. You appear. So yeah, an ocean. You appear in the desert. You don't see the city anywhere around you, and you feel yourselves starting to sink down oh. into the sand. <laughs> halfway up to your knees in only a moment and that's where I'm going to leave y'all tonight great, you sure you don't want to give us five minutes to see if we can blow up the world yeah. I feel like that's the rate of acceleration we're going at with that event <laughs> I feel like we could do, actually I think we're better than that I think we could blow up the multiverse in the next five minutes <laughs> yeah all right. I put the amulet in a bag of holding, and then I put the bag of holding in a bag of holding. That's the plan. That's it. Thank you all uh, for watching. Uh, thank you. Uh, special thanks to our guest, Zach, for joining and playing Pharaoh uh, this week. Uh, we will be back next week uh, at our usual time, uh, 7.15 p.m. Pacific on Wednesday night. Um, Lincoln's not here, so I'll plug it for him. On Monday nights, we've got another game. Uh, it is more sci-fi. It is, in fact, uh, Starfinder, which is the sci-fi version of Pathfinder. It's a really fun system, a uh, really fun setting. Uh, we are, where are we right now there? We just uh, pissed we're off. We're on Calo Ahoy, right? Yeah, we're on Calo Ahoy, uh, and we pissed off 
uh, some scary mermaid. robot dudes while trying to get these eggs back from that they mermaid stole mer- from mermaid people. It's some really exciting stuff. Tune in Monday night, 7.15 p.m. Pacific, here on Jetsam Academy. Uh, Kill the mech. We will be back this Monday. Also, um, check out, we've got an announcement video out for it. You can go check that out right now. It should be somewhere on the page, up or down from here. Um, we are doing a special one-shot this weekend. Uh, Woo! We Woo. will be doing our first episode of Catch of the Day, uh, which is our new monthly-ish uh, series of one-shots where we will do fun different systems, fun different settings. Um, and for our first one-shot, it will be at uh, noon Pacific time this Sunday, March 31st. Uh, and uh, Nicole will be running it. Nicole, if you want to talk a little bit real quick. Yeah, uh, we will be playing Mouse Guard, which um, is set in the world um, of mice, the mouse territories. Uh, you will all be surprisingly mice, <laughs> and um, you will be on an adventure uh, given to you by the matriarch of the Mouse Guard, um, protecting these territories. Cool. <laughs> So yeah, we will see you all this Sunday for Catch of the Day. We will see you all Monday for Into the Black. And then we'll see you next Wednesday back here for more Princes of Azamar. With that, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Boy.